This is episode 163, Competence versus Confidence. Welcome to Alive by Design. My name is Blake Mallon, and we're here to bring you inspiring people, principles, and practices to help you wake up, move toward your meant to, and feel fully alive. Open your mind, and let's dive in. Hey guys, before you listen to the podcast, I just wanna drop in and say, I appreciate you for being here, and I'm super excited about this new Walk With Me series. These are solo episodes where I take some time in the middle of my morning run through the Santa Monica Mountains to share some inspired ideas and thoughts on my mind and heart. If you wanna join me for any of these conversations live, you can catch me many mornings on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash blakemallon.page. Would love to see you there. Love you guys, enjoy the episode. Walk with me. If you're not growing, you're dying. I know we've all heard that one before. I really believe that. There's something to this whole lifelong pursuit of better, of growth, of progress, of moving forward that I think we're built for, I think we're designed for, I think we're created for. I do think it's innate, a part of us, this need for progress in any direction. I don't want to limit a conversation of progress to any one lane. A lot of times we associate growth to career or quote unquote success in our own interpretation of. But I think at the core, we got to be getting better in some way at something every day. I think in order to feel happy, in order to be fulfilled, in order to feel like alive, like feel like we're not just wasting breaths, wasting minutes. And when it comes down to that pursuit of better, that progress, that personal or professional growth. To me, what either accelerates us forward or holds us back comes down to two things. And it may sound overly simple, but at the end of the day, it really is two things. And I want to talk about those two things, maybe cause us to raise some awareness, do some reflection on where we're at on both sides of that coin, on what we're focused on right now, what we want to get better at right now, what we want to level up at right now. And, you know, I guess I'll start with the story of what inspired today's topic. So over the Easter weekend, had a chance to get away for a couple days up to Mammoth Mountain. Mammoth Mountain is the biggest skiing mountain in California. I guess you'd call it Central California, although it attracts a lot of the Southern California, about five hour drive from where I am here in the Sierra Nevadas. Kind of a special place for me. A place my dad used to take me and friends when I was younger. Hadn't been there in a while, long while. And had a chance to go up this weekend with my family, my parents, my mom and my dad, my sister, and obviously Karis and Grayson and Sadie. And it was a great family weekend and it was awesome to hit the slopes three generations tearing down the mountain was a great time I remember the runs when I was quite a bit older than Grayson is now going with my dad so to be able to go down the runs with him and my kids was fun and so proud of both of them Um, Sadie especially not quite 
right? Not even five yet, still four years old. And got to the point where she's going down the mountains, going down the greens all by herself. First time, put a smile on my face. One of my favorite moments of the weekend is watching her go down on the very first run she's ever gone down in her life without anybody holding her, waiting for her. And she's flying. We get down toward the bottom of the run and she's picking up speed. And I'm getting nervous for her. She was going fast. I'm like, I don't know if she can stop. So I ski up next to her. And all I hear is, Yahoo! She's by herself, just screaming, Yahoo! And I couldn't see the smile because she was bundled up in a face mask, but I could feel it and just maybe laugh, compete joy in the moment, cheering for herself, <laughs> by herself. Well, we're all worried for her. She's having a time of her life. And Grayson did amazing. Got him just absolutely crushing the, the greens and even going over some jumps and some boxes and I was having a blast. But here's the part that inspired today's conversation. You know, we had our first day, we're going through all the greens, doing amazing. And then the second day, I figured, hey, let's take him up to a blue. So we skied over and got on another chair and instantly you could see his demeanor change, his attitude change. It's a different chair, it wasn't familiar, it wasn't the same one that we were going up and down the day before. A little steeper chair, went up a little further up the mountain and then he found out it was a blue. And mind you, he doesn't have context to what these are except for the context we create. And we end up going down and he just locks up. He just freezes at the top. But it's not that much different than what we were going down on the lower part of the mountain. And he starts moving very slowly. Permanent pizza inching down. And I'm sitting there saying, Grayson, you got this. It's not that much different, but dad, it's a blue. It's not a green. I can't do this. And I had to have the conversation with him. I said, son, you have the ability to do this. I wouldn't have brought you up here if you didn't have the competence, if you didn't have the skill, if you didn't have the ability. You can do this. I know you can do this. We're going to do the same thing we were doing down below. We're going to do it here. No, but it's a blue, but I can't do this. And he's inching and inching and inching. And I started telling him, like, Grayson, it's, you have the ability. We just have to give you the confidence. We have to have your confidence. Same confidence that you have down below. It's the same confidence up here. And it took a minute, and we had to inch for a while and go very slowly and permanent pizza that's the the snow plow position for kids these days and he just followed my tracks down and then when we got about oh I don't know 100 yards down the hill I told him I said well Grayson this part right down here this part right down here this is like a green this is like just like we were doing down there it's like a green let's get to there and then we can go and we get to this part and then he started to get his confidence up and and we started to take off the rest of the way down the mountain. Now, mind you, the rest of the way down the mountain was, was actually a, a blue. Now, you may call me a bad parent here. But there's a point in the lesson in, in the story. And he did it phenomenally all the way down. Started taking off and we met at the, the bottom of the mountain. And I, I had to have the conversation with him as we're going up the chair. I said, Grayson, you know, you, want, you have the competence. You have the skill. You have the ability. We just got to work on your confidence. And the reason that you froze up there and went slow, it wasn't your competence. It wasn't your ability. It was your confidence. And you started to get a little scared because someone said it was a quote unquote blue. And that conversation 
applies to everything that every one of us do. It doesn't matter if you're talking about skiing the slopes or you're a seven-year-old or a 70-year-old. At the end of the day, us pursuing better, us leveling up, us moving forward, in anything that we choose to do, it oil always boils down to, to two things. Do we have the competence in that category? The competence meaning the skill, right? The ability, the know-how. And do we have the confidence, the confidence, the personal certainty, right? The personal assurance, the confidence in order to move forward. And the level that we're at right now where we're plateaued or we're stuck, I'm telling you, it comes down to one or the other that you need to focus on in order to move forward. Is it a competence thing or is it a confidence thing? Now, when it comes down to competence, well, how do you build competence? If I were to ask you guys the question, how do you build competence in a category? And you can apply this to anything. It can be a hobby you want to get good at, a sport you want to get good at, a new skill that you want to learn, right? Something that you want to excel at. What is it in your life right now that you want to get better at? Pick anything in any aspect of your life personal, professional, right? What is something that you are pursuing better at? And if you want to increase your competence, right, it just comes down to a couple things. You know, I, I, I think maybe one that we skip sometimes that today is so accessible, more accessible than ever before when it comes down to increasing our competence, the the thing that collapses time, right? That saves time, the time machine, the thing that allows you to, to step in and come out, right? With another 12 months of knowledge without taking 12 months of time, right? Collapsing time comes down to, to expertise. We have access today to, to expertise in anything. Finding a mentor, someone who has done what you want to do. Finding an expert, someone that is already tremendously skilled at what you want to do. There are very few things in this life that any of us will do that have not already been done, let alone mastered, let alone mastered by many. Let alone mastered by many who are out there willing to share what they did to master it. Think about the marvel of the time that we live in right now where virtually anything has been done, has been done well, has been mastered, and has people willing to show you the way talk about a time machine. So I think don't rush in and skip the step of tap into expertise, mentors or coaches, experts. And today you can do that in such a simple format beyond just books, right? Which were and have been the the time machines of life. Now we got content everywhere, audio, podcast, short form, long form, simple Google, go to YouTube, find someone who's done it, learn their how-to, right? The strategy piece. Learn the how-to because you can sit there and learn in a few minutes what would take you weeks or months or even years to figure it out on your own. Why figure it out on your own? The only thing you have to figure out is it's already been figured out. (laughs) And once you figure that out, you don't need to figure it out. Just find the person that's figured it out. So guys, strategy, how-to, expertise, right, is the starting point of competence, in my opinion, of collapsing time. But that isn't going to do it for you, right? Knowing how and actually doing are different things. Knowing what to do and doing are different things. Right? Knowing how to do it and doing are different things. There's merit to knowing what. There's merit to knowing how. Start there, but then you got to put in the reps. You got to put in the time. Repetition at the end of the day, constant repetition is what builds competence in anything. You want to play the piano, constant repetition. You want to learn an instrument, constant repetition. You want to get better at a sport, constant repetition. You want to get better at public speaking, constant repetition. You want to get better at creating content, constant repetition. You want to get better at anything, constant repetition. Malcolm Gladwell in the book Outliers made the infamous 10,000 hours observation. You want to become a master in anything, it takes 10,000 hours. 10,000 hours was the common pattern of people that mastered categories. Repetition, how fast can you put in your 10,000 hours? Not time. You can take 50 years to do 10,000 hours. You can take five years to do 10,000 hours. You can collapse time by repetition, constant 
And the good news is the more you do something, the better you get. Matter of fact, it's almost impossible to do something over and over and over again and not get better. I'll say that again. It's almost impossible to do something over and over and over and over and over and over and over again and not get better. So competence, the skill piece, comes down to mirroring the strategy and the expertise with the doing, the the repetition over and over again. And if you apply those two things, you figure out people that have figured it out, you apply their pattern, their method, their strategy, and you do it over and over again. And anything, you're going to get better every single day. Which leads to that second piece, the confidence. Now, what's interesting is a lot of times we, we know the competence side. Like we, we've been taught we got to put in the work, put in the time, put in the grind. We got to hustle. And a lot of times we, we do that. And if we're not doing that, we know what's keeping us stuck. But I meet so many people, entrepreneurs, right, solopreneurs, that are putting in the time and that are competent. They have the talent. They have the skill. But this next piece they miss. Because you can have the competence and not have the confidence. And you guys, confidence is half the equation. That's the other side of the coin. Having the confidence in order to move forward. You know, I think there's two things today that are just so prevalent that attack the very core of our self-confidence. The first being the comparison between ourselves and others. And I don't think comparison is 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 a new thing or a new issue. I think by nature, many of us are built to be competitive and by definition, that means we compare ourselves against the the benchmarks of, of others. But today we have this social media window into what we perceive as people's best life. They, they show us the 1% of their best life and we assume that's the 100%. And it creates this unrealistic measuring stick. And even though intellectually we know that, we still do it. We still scroll and instantly compare where we're at to where other people are at. And the challenge with that is we're constantly comparing where we are at in everything and every way to people's top 1% in every direction. And it's this unrealistic measuring stick. And that constant and never-ending comparison by means of the scroll, by means of the social media, attacks confidence. It attacks confidence. The other killer of confidence today is the constant need for validation or affirmation from other people. And again, I don't know why these have become such massive holes that we fall into, the way that we're brought up, the way that we're raised, the the educational system, the structures. I don't know what it is, but I know it to be true where we have a crisis today where so many people are stuck measuring their own self-value, their own self-worth, their own self-confidence against the opinions of others the affirmation of others. And we put so much weight on that validation of other people, more weight on someone else's validation of ourself than even our knowing of, of ourself. And there's a giant flaw in that, in that there's never a win. Because at the end of the day, the truth is everybody has their own flaws. Everybody has their own issues. Nobody is a, a perfect mirror. And if you're facing your own reflection on the mirror of somebody else, it's always going to be distorted by their own references, their own issues, their own drama, their own stuff, their own filter. You can't be crafting your self-image by distorted mirrors of other people all day long. And those two things are killers of confidence. The constant comparison of everyone in every way and the constant need for an affirmation or validation for you to say you're good. So the confidence game would be the opposite of that. It would be detaching yourself from those two confidence killers. But but Blake, does that mean we don't compare? Well, if you're competitive and you have the need to compare, we have to shift our filter on who we're comparing ourselves to. And it's not about everyone else and the 1% in every way. 
If you're going to compare, compare yourself to yourself yesterday. That's a perspective shift. How are you better today than you were yesterday? How are you better today than you were last week? How are you better today than you were last month? How are you better today than you were last year? How are you today better than the you of yesterday? Focus on comparing yourself based on that perspective. And you're going to build confidence because if you're pursuing better every single day, if you're getting consistent effort every single day. The you of today is better than the you of yesterday. The you of today is wiser than the you of yesterday. The you of today is more perspective than the you of yesterday. The you of today is more experience than the you of yesterday. The you of today has more fortitude and resilience and stickability, perseverance than the you of yesterday. The you of today is better than the you of yesterday. So stop comparing yourself against everyone in every way and start comparing yourself to how are you better than the you of yesterday. That's the comparison game. And when it comes down to validation and affirmation, the first person and and main person you should be seeking validation and affirmation from is yourself. Is yourself. Because only you know what you're going through. Only you know what it takes. Only you you know what you're putting into it. Only you know what you're overcoming. Only you know all the thoughts that are going inside your head. Isn't it interesting that you can sleep by the same person every single night, spend time with all your friends every single day, and you know what? You're only going to have a small glimpse of a percentage of what's going on inside that person's mind. Only you know what's going on inside your mind. So start giving yourself the that a boy. Start telling yourself good job. Start telling yourself amazing work. Start telling yourself awesome progress. Start telling yourself, talk to yourself how you talk to your kids. Talk to yourself how you lift others up. Talk to yourself, right, in the way that you wish others would treat you. Start with yourself. You guys, because those things are what build a self-confidence and you have to have a confidence in order to move forward. You can have all the confidence in the world, but if you lack the self-confidence, you're not going to move to your potential. The irony, and here's the irony, is you can have all the confidence in the world and lack the confidence and you'll still move forward. <laughs> I've met a lot of people that that have an overwhelming majority of confidence and Maybe need to catch up in the, the realm of competence, but they move forward because they believe and know they can and they figure it out on their way. Man, it would be a horrible thing to be amazing in a category and everybody knows you're amazing in that category. You have all the potential in the world, but you lack the confidence to access your potential. Don't let that be you. Don't let that be you. And again, you can apply this equation, confidence, competence, two sides of the coin, two buckets to fill, and anything that you want. So my question back to you, how are you pursuing better? What is it right now that's on your list for 2023 that you want to get better at? You want to excel, a skill you want to learn, growth you want to have. What is it? What is it? What is it? And I want you to put this lens right over where you're at right now. Where's your competence at? And what do you need to do to raise the skill? Who can you learn from? What expert can you Can you get mentored by, even from afar? Could be digitally. Are you putting in the reps? Are you putting in the time? Let's work on your competence. Where's your competence at on a scale of one to 10? And then the second question is, where's your confidence? Where's your confidence? That self-assurance, that certainty in that you are better today than you were yesterday. Because that confidence will move you forward. More view from the top. Look at sea of clouds today. Sea of clouds coming in through the canyon. Beautiful spring day. And hope today's conversation inspired you and caused you to ask some questions. So here's to growing our competence and confidence in ways that make us better every day, that move us to our potential and do it in a way that makes an impact, that contributes to those around us. Until the next time we talk together, have a great day, everybody. Hey guys, one last thing. I'm super excited that this new podcast, The Live by Design, just went live. You see, I designed the show to bring you inspired thoughts and fascinating conversations with the world's most impactful people, to provide transformative principles and practices to help you wake up, move toward your meant to, and feel fully alive. And I'd love for you to help me spread the word now. Simply subscribe, rate, and review the podcast on this platform right now. So if I've ever given you value, please do me this personal favor and go subscribe now.
And if you found today's episode helpful in any way, make sure you share this with at least one friend today. You have the power right now to change someone's day. So send them a text message with a link to alivebydesign.com or simply copy and paste the link right from this podcast platform. Who's one person you know right now that you want to see succeed, that you want to see grow, that you want to see feel more alive? Shoot them a text with your largest takeaway from today and be a light in their day. And if you were referred here by a friend, make sure you shoot them a text back and say thank you. I'd love to hear from you directly on what you got from today's podcast. So if you're up for it, drop by my Instagram at Blake Mallon and shoot me a DM. And as always, thank you for showing up. I'm grateful for you. And I hope our time together today in some small way helped you feel a little more alive. Until next time.